What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk to you guys about Moneybox, which is one of the fairly new up and coming mobile investment platforms, which works a bit differently from a traditional investment brokerage account, where it's basically aimed at beginner investors who don't necessarily know an awful lot about the stock market. Now I've noticed online that Moneybox seems to have a really good reputation and I've heard a lot of my friends talk about it in person as well. So I thought it'd be worth looking at it in a bit more detail and trying to work out whether or not I think it's a worthwhile platform. So I'll be going through how the features all work, as well as giving my opinions on what I actually think about it, coming from the point of view of someone who manages their own investment portfolio. Now before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell so you never miss a video. And as always, just as a quick disclaimer, this is in no way financial advice, I'm simply just giving my opinions and thoughts. Always make sure to do your own due diligence and never sign up for anything without researching it yourself. With that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so if you haven't heard of Moneybox before, you might be thinking, what is it and how does it work? So as I briefly touched on before, Moneybox is essentially a mobile investing platform, which is designed to make investing as easy as possible for people who might not know an awful lot about the stock market. And some call it a do it for me investment platform. So this is a bit different from a traditional investment brokerage account, where it's a do it yourself platform and you have to find individual stocks yourself and pick what you want to invest in. So generally it requires a bit more knowledge and understanding of the stock market. But how Moneybox works is that you actually pick an investment approach rather than actually finding and picking the winning stocks yourself. So these sorts of platforms give great exposure to a whole new market of people who may have never invested before and don't know anything about the stock market to actually start investing themselves and start making some good returns and making investing in the stock market far more accessible than it once was. Now Moneybox does offer a range of different products including savings accounts as well as a range of different investment services but in this video we're just going to be looking at the investment services. So on the investment side of things they offer pretty much all the products that you might expect from a brokerage account. For example pensions, lifetime ICEs, junior ICEs, ICEs and traditional dealing accounts. But they all operate in the same way in terms of investment structure. So when it comes to picking which account's right for you, it just depends on your own circumstances and what you're actually looking for. Now before we look into how the investing approaches work, it's worth noting that Moneybox is regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, which is something to always look for in any financial platform that you're using. And it's also covered by FSCS. So if for any reason Moneybox ceases to exist and goes into liquidation, your money will be covered for up to £85,000, which is great. And safety-wise, there shouldn't be any major concerns. All right, let's now look at the different investment approaches and how they work. Okay, so like I said, whichever product you're picking, whether it's for your pension or if it's a lifetime ISA, the investment process is going to all run in the same way, so all you have to do is pick your investment approach. Okay, so the investment styles or approaches have three different options, starting with cautious. Now this one I see is designed for people who have absolutely no experience with the stock market or investing, and want to keep risk as low as possible just to get the ball rolling, but at the sacrifice of not having the potential to make really high gains. And within the cautious approach, the majority of your money will be kept in corporate and government bonds as well as a cash fund, with only 15% being invested in global shares and then 5% in global property shares. Then we have the balanced approach, which is seen as slightly more risky than the cautious approach, so there's potential to make high returns with that extra risk involved. And within the balanced approach, 65% of your portfolio will be invested in global shares, 10% in global property shares, and the remaining 25% in corporate bonds, so none of your money will be invested in government bonds or a cash fund, like with the cautious approach. And then finally, we have the adventurous approach, which is designed to have higher risk than the balanced approach, as well as the potential to have higher growth. So if you pick the adventurous allocation, you'll be investing in the same things as the balanced approach, just with a different ratio. So the investment in global shares will be up to 80%, global property shares at 15%, and then corporate bonds down to 5%. So you can pick between any of these different investment approaches, which will basically just adjust the proportion of what you're actually invested in. And you can pick whichever one suits what you're actually looking for in your investment portfolio. But there's also the option to customize these further and adjust the proportions yourself. Now some of you might be thinking, what are these different things you'll be invested in? What's the difference between global shares and corporate bonds and how do they all work? So I'll just explain as simply as possible what the differences are and how they all work. And I'll actually show you exactly what shares Moneybox is investing your money into. So first we have the global shares. So for this, Moneybox is currently using the Fidelity Index World Fund, which is an MSCI index tracking fund. Now this particular index is basically made up of 1,500 of the world's largest companies, delving into a whole range of different markets. And so this includes companies like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Nestle, Amazon, and so on. But basically, this particular investment will be giving you exposure to massive worldwide corporations. Next, we have the global property shares. For this one, the iShares Global Property Equity Fund is used. And so this one's also an index fund, tracking an index made up of global property companies. 
Next we have the corporate bonds, and for this one Moneybox used the iShares Overseas Corporate Bond Index Fund. Now a corporate bond is effectively a loan given out to a company by the person investing, and in return for the loan they receive interest payments back as well as all the money lent out at the end. So this is typically seen as less risky than investing in companies like with the other two I just discussed. Next we have the government bonds. Within this one, your money will be invested in the iShares Overseas Government Bond Index Fund. Now government bonds are basically the same as corporate bonds. However, rather than being a loan to an individual company, instead it will be a loan to a government. So because governments are supposedly more stable than individual companies, this is then seen as slightly less risky than investing in corporate bonds. And then finally, we have the cash fund. Within the cash fund, your money will be invested in the legal in general cash trust accumulation fund. So a cash fund works very similar to how a savings account would work. So the money will just sit there over time making a small amount of interest and will be less affected by fluctuations in the market. So the cash fund is seen as the safest option but it's never going to make you a lot of money. So that basically covers how all the approaches work and what's included within each investment and what your money will actually be invested in. So for me, if I was picking one of these approaches to invest with my own money, I'd definitely go for the adventurous approach because I'm personally not too interested in so-called safe investments because I generally believe as an investor, if you want to make good returns, you're going to have to take an element of risk. And the way I look at it is that with any investment, there's always an element of risk. So if you're taking that risk anyway, you might as well make sure that there's potential for high returns. And even so-called safe investments can lose money as well. Okay, so that covers how the investments actually work within Moneybox. But now let's talk about some of their other features. Okay, so one of the features that Moneybox offers, which I think is really great, is to round up your everyday spending and invest the difference. So how this works is that you link your credit and debit cards to Moneybox. Every time that you make a purchase of an uneven amount, Moneybox will take the difference and invest it. So for example, if you spend £2.55 on a coffee, that expenditure will be rounded up to £3, keeping your finances nice and clean using only rounded numbers, and then that extra 45p Moneybox will take and then invest for you. So I think this is a really great feature, especially for people that aren't that used to saving money, as it's a really good way of letting you save money without actually having to change your lifestyle at all. And it's great that Moneybox offer this to work with credit cards and debit cards. So as well as this spend rounding feature, to actually add money to your Moneybox account, it's really easy to do and you basically just choose how much you want to add to your account each week or month and it does it all automatically for you. So it gets you into really good habits of saving a certain amount each month without you actually having to go and do it yourself. Okay, so now let's talk about fees. So Moneybox currently charge a flat fee of £1 a month, however this is actually waived for the first three months of having it. Now as well as this £1 a month, you'll also be charged a 0.4% platform fee, along with a fund fee ranging from 0.22% to 0.24%. Now when it comes to investing and investment platforms, the fees are pretty much unavoidable. So I think the best thing to do is to simply just see where it sits within the market against competitors and other services that might be similar to help understand how the different fees might affect you more or less depending on how much money you're investing with. So when looking at direct competitors of do-it-for-me investment platforms like Wealthify and Nutmeg, the fees are very similar but worked out a little bit differently. And the thing that's potentially something to watch out for with Moneybox is that £1 a month fee. So for example, if you're investing with a particularly small amount of money, I'd say anything lower than £500, that £1 a month fee is actually quite significant as it eats into a larger percentage of smaller balances compared to larger balances, as most other platforms charge a percentage based on the total portfolio value. So just to reinforce that, if you're investing with less than £500, you might be better off looking elsewhere. But that being said, if you're investing consistently, that first three months is free, depending on how much you are investing and might still be a good option for you. Now one of the great things about these platforms is that you don't have to pay any stamp duty or dealing charges, well at least they're not visible charges. So in comparison, looking at a traditional brokerage like Hargreaves Lansdowne or AJ Bell, every time you make a trade or buy or sell some shares, you're going to have to pay a dealing charge for that transaction, as well as stamp duty on top of that. Now this does vary depending on which brokerage you're using, but in total usually it will cost you between 5 and £20 every time you buy or sell but this does also vary depending on how many shares you're buying and what sort of investment it is. But it's usually more cost effective if you're investing with a larger amount of money. So this is one reason why it's great to use Moneybox instead, as it's a really accessible option for investors who don't necessarily have a large amount of capital to start out with. So now I just want to talk about some of the features which I like and dislike about Moneybox, starting off with the things that I think are really great. So as I previously touched on, I think it's really great that there's so much emphasis on saving money. It seems like a lot of people out there don't have much emphasis on saving money within their lifestyle, so I think it's really great that Moneybox have such an emphasis on saving and saving consistently. So using the weekly and monthly deposits as well as the spend rounding features makes it really easy for you to save and get into really good habits. 
I also really like how accessible it is and how it taps into a whole new market of people that don't necessarily know an awful lot about the stock market, as well as people who have always liked the idea of investing but want to try it out with a smaller amount to start with. The platform itself also does a great job of making everything really easy to understand. So within the stock market it can be quite overwhelming for a beginner as there are so many different areas and different options of where you can put your money and what to invest in, as well as a lot of new terminology that you might have to get to grips with. But within Moneybox it's actually really simple to understand for an everyday user who doesn't necessarily know all the terminology. And as with all these do it for me investment platforms, I think it's really important that they're transparent with you of where your money is actually invested. So the information is actually there for you within Moneybox to see exactly where your money is invested. So rather than just showing you that you're invested in corporate bonds, you can actually see exactly what fund your money is invested in within the corporate bonds market. And finally, from a business point of view, I also think Moneybox is a really great idea as it does tap into a whole new market of new potential investors, making it a much less scary and intimidating process. Okay, so now onto the things I'm less excited about within Moneybox. So the first thing is the actual investment options. I find them all to be a little bit limited. So they use the whole marketing strategy of choosing your investment style and approach. But when it comes down to it, if you go for the balanced or adventurous approach, you're only actually gonna be invested in three different funds, which I don't think is a particularly diverse portfolio. And to me it seems if you're a beginner, you don't actually have to do an awful lot of research to understand what these funds you're actually invested in are. And if you want to, you could actually invest your money directly into them yourself, rather than using Moneybox at all. So what I'm saying by this is that I thought they would go a bit further than just investing in index funds within each category. And you might be invested in more than one fund within each sector. So with the global shares, for example, you might actually be invested in multiple funds rather than the one that Moneybox use and the one we discussed earlier. But on the other hand, if they're getting good results, maybe there's no need to do this. Another thing I find a little bit limiting about Moneybox is that if you're a novice investor who has a genuine interest in the stock market, I think you'll actually outgrow Moneybox fairly quickly. So for example, if I had just started investing with Moneybox and I started seeing good positive returns each year, I'd probably start looking for other opportunities within the stock market to see how I can improve my portfolio. But within Moneybox, there's currently no option to invest in individual funds or shares. And so if you did want to invest in individual shares and funds, you'd have to set up a different brokerage account. Now I get that the whole idea of Moneybox is to keep things simple and not overcomplicate things with options. However, I do think it would be a good addition to have this in the future, to allow users to progress within their investing. Now something else I'm not a huge fan of is the way that they display their data and previous year's performance. So on the website, you can compare how the different investing approaches have done over the past 10 years. Now this is good for comparing them against each other, but it's not too helpful at comparing them against anything else. So for me, when I'm investing, I always like to compare my own performance and the funds that I'm investing in against an index or other funds within their category. So I usually do this on the Hargreaves Lansdowne website, where you can easily compare whatever it is you're looking at against an index or something else. And you can compare the two really easily within a chart. But if you wanted to do this within Moneybox, you'd have to look at each of the five funds that they use. So for example, with the global shares, you'd have to look at the Fidelity World Fund and then compare them to whatever it is you want to compare them with through a third party website like Hargreaves Lansdowne. So what I'm saying is that I think it'd be really great within the website if alongside the previous 10 years performance for each of their different investing styles, it also showed some indexes like the FTSE 100, for example, just so you basically have something to compare it with. Now the final thing is that due to how the platform works, you can't actually take advantage of market crashes and big fluctuations. Now this is only really relevant to people who understand the stock market a little bit more, but if we look at large scale market crashes like the one due to the pandemic recently, a lot of the time when there's a market crash, it creates a good buying opportunity. And within Moneybox, you're unable to take full advantage of this because it invests consistently on a single day. So you can't choose to buy more shares on a particular day if you want to. Now that being said, investing consistently is known to be far more beneficial than trying to time the market in terms of returns over time. However, I still think it would be nice to have a little bit of extra flexibility. But again, I understand that the target user may not actually want to be doing this and they just want to keep things as simple as possible. Okay, so that basically covers everything. But do I personally think I'll be using Moneybox in the future? So for me, I don't actually think there's a need for me to use Moneybox for investing. And this basically comes down to the fact that I don't fit their target market, as I'm not a beginner investor and I feel I can make more money by managing my own portfolio myself. But that being said, I think Moneybox offers so much potential for certain people out there. So I think it's a great first step for beginners to get into investing and start learning the ropes. And also for people who like the idea of investing, but who also don't necessarily want to spend the time researching and finding investments for themselves. And so if you do have money to invest, but you don't want to research your own investments, the only real option I can see is to find a financial advisor to invest your money for you. But that simply won't be worth doing if you have a small amount of money. So that's a great gap that I think Moneybox fills for people who want to invest, but not necessarily with a large amount of money. 
but I will say, as someone who's gone through the process of knowing nothing about the stock market, to learning how it all works and finding my own investments, I think it's really worthwhile being able to do it yourself because it increases the potential of you being able to make more money than you would be able to using Moneybox alone. And also, if you start out now with a smaller amount of capital, once you start understanding how it works, finding winning stocks and seeing consistent portfolio growth, all you need to do once you feel comfortable with this to increase your potential profits is to simply just add more capital. So it's a really great skill to learn so it can help you throughout your life. Okay, so there we have it. If you did make it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy it or feel like you learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you could smash that like button as it really helps me out. And if you enjoy this sort of content and want to see more, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell so you never miss a video. And do let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm really curious to know how many of you guys use Moneybox or have thought about using it. And as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to just drop them in the comments. I'll make sure to respond to all of them. With that being said, take it easy guys and keep saving.